Hey, Julia. Long time no see. Time really flies, doesn't it? Sarah? Yeah, it's been ages. We haven't seen each other since we graduated from high school, I guess. Yeah. And it was 10 years ago. How have you been? Anything new you want to update me? Are you married? Oh. I'm doing great. And I'm not married yet. How about you? Great, really? I remember you always followed me around to wherever I go. And you're super slow at learning or doing whatever you do. So I guess now you're still a loser and pushover at work. By the way, do you have any job yet? Yes. I'm working at AC Corporation. Do you know it? Of course. Do you think I'm stupid or what? AC is one of the biggest corporation in the country. I don't believe it. How can someone like you have a job at such a big company? Oh. I bet you are doing some kind of manual labor job there, aren't you? Are you a janitor there or something? If you keep talking to me like that, I can't answer your questions, Sarah. So what are you trying to say? Why are you approaching me now? We weren't that close, as I remember. Yeah. I know. I guess you can't tell me what you do because you're doing some manual labor jobs in the company that really suit you. How could you be close to someone like me? I was the prettiest and the most talented student in our class. So it should be the same now, too. I guess I'm also the most successful woman among our old classmates. Ha ha ha. Are you in contact with any of them? I don't have to answer any questions from you, right? Are we done now, Sarah? Are you embarrassed in front of your old friend, huh? Is that why you can't tell me what you do? Oh, don't feel that way. I won't look down on you, so go ahead and tell me the truth. We all start somewhere. I mean, some people are just less talented than others, you know? You shouldn't blame yourself too much for being so useless. Okay. Just keep talking to yourself, Sarah. I'm going to bed now. I have a lot of work to do tomorrow. I don't have time to waste with you. Wait. I have something to tell you. Don't be too surprised, okay? Actually, I'm gonna work at the same company with you. What? Really? Pretty cool, huh? I was surprised to hear your company, too. Because I just received an offer to work there as a temporary employee today. Unlike you, I'm gonna do a real job there. They're gonna pay me a great deal, too. Are you sure you're talking about the same AC Corporation? You're really gonna work there? Yeah. It really suits me doesn't it? Look at me. I'm even reaching out to an old friend who wasn't close to me. <laughs> yeah, sure. So why are you texting me all of a sudden? It's not just about bragging about yourself, isn't it? Why are you so impatient? Just listen to what I'm saying first, okay? All right, madam. I'm still surprised you got a job in AC Corporation. So why did you get the job in the first place? I know, right? I'm also surprised myself. Well, while I'm looking for a new job, I received an email from the HR team leader from AC. Oh. I guess they were recruiting people from different backgrounds then. And they chose you? Yeah. I'm so talented, you know? That's why I got accepted into a big corporation like AC. Unlike you, who's stuck in the same place for the rest of your life, because of your slowness and passivity. Excuse me? I've been working for AC long before you, Sarah. Aren't you just a temporary worker? Of course I'm gonna get promoted and achieve great success in the company very soon. You'll see how great I am, compared to someone like you, who can never do anything great in life. 
But don't worry. When I become extremely successful, I won't forget you. I'll give you some money or help you get a better job. See? That's how great I am. I never forget old friends, even though we weren't so close. I can't believe AC could be so easy in hiring people. What do you mean? Are you mocking me? Of course they hire me because I'm someone they really need in the team. I was the most talented student back in high school and college and until now, you know? I'm someone who's on a totally different level. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. So why are you contacting me? Can you tell me the reason now? Oops. Actually nothing else to say. I just want to share the big news with everyone. So I contacted all of our old classmates, including you. I'm so proud of myself, you know? I know I'm made for something special, something really big like AC Corporation. So you're saying that you've contacted everyone from our class? Yes. What? You think you're so special that I tell such a big thing to only you? Please. I'm Sarah Adams. Okay. So that's it? Can I go now? I'm very busy right now. Wait. I'm gonna hold a class reunion at the end of next month. You have to come, okay? No, I won't come. I have a lot of work to do every day. I don't want to waste time. Who says you're gonna waste time? How many times can ever you meet me in person? I'm giving you a chance to learn something new. Don't waste it. You're gonna learn a lot from what I share in the upcoming reunion. You'll regret if you don't come and have fun with us. I'll consider you as a loser if you don't show up. Whatever you plan to do, I don't care. You can consider me as whatever you want. I won't go to your stupid event. I'm really busy. Busy what? Busy cleaning the house and the building? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, cleaning the house is also on my schedule. I clean my house to relax my mind and release myself from stress. Oh, don't be silly. Just come. By the way, have you met the CEO of AC Corporation yet? Are you nuts? No. How can I meet him? But I don't care. I mean, I can meet him. I think I'm gonna meet him soon when I start working in the company. Do you want me to introduce him to you at that time? I bet you didn't meet him either, with the position you're at. Why are you so sure about that? I never told you what my position is. Oh, please. Don't try to fool me. You can't be doing anything great in such a big corporation. Well. Whatever you think. Congratulations on joining our company, I guess. Our company? Are you kidding me? It's our company for me, not you. Anyway, I'm gonna be a big woman from next week. Okay. Are we done? I really need to go. Fine. I'll see you later then. When you see me at the company, don't be afraid to say hello, okay? I will introduce my coworkers to you. Julia. I saw you are standing with my boss at the company today. And it seemed like you and her are discussing something serious together. How on earth could you talk to her? Are you her relative? Is that why you could join our company? Now that you heard I've joined the company, so you asked her to give you some serious position like me? Oh my god. I knew you're not the good kind of person, but I didn't expect you to be so despicable. Are you trying to steal my position through your personal connections? Wow. Some people need to work hard, and some people are just too lucky. Have you finished talking? Can I say something now? Please. Go explain yourself. 
I don't have to explain anything to you. I told you I've worked at AC long before you joined the company. Of course I have a lot of work to do with your boss. Oh, what's your boss name, by the way? I can't remember every member of the company, you know. Stop being ridiculous and talking like you're the boss or something, you sneaky little witch. Oh, I've got an idea. Why don't you come to see me now and I can teach you how to work properly? I don't have time for that, Sarah. Just mind your own business and do your job properly or you're gonna lose it to someone else. I don't need you to teach me how to work. You're inferior to me, witch. Come to see me right now. I said I'm busy, Sarah. I'm working. Don't be silly. You can't be working properly. Okay, I'll tell you something serious. I heard that the CEO of the corporation came to our company today to supervise the work of the employees. Let me tell you. He's gonna be impressed with my talent and then have to raise my salary. Then I'm gonna quickly get promoted and become his assistant. At that time, I'm gonna ask him to give you a proper position. All you have to do is to beg me to show you how to do a real job. What do you say? I'm too generous with an old friend, aren't I? It's not funny, Julia. How dare you ignore me when I'm talking to you? I said come to my office immediately. You used to listen to whatever I said. Be obedient this time, also. It's been a damn hour and you aren't here yet. And I can see that you even haven't bothered to open the message up. What's the hell going on with you? Am I a joke to you, huh? Don't forget who you are and be aware that I'm superior to you. You better answer me right away and come over here or you'll regret about what happens next. Are you gonna continue like this? Is this how you treat your superior? I helped you so much back in high school and now this is your way of paying me back. Fine. Keep ignoring me. I'm gonna let you lose the lowly position that you've always valued. You heard me? I'm gonna meet the CEO and tell him how disrespectful you are towards your superior. I'm sure he's gonna fire you very soon. That hit was painful, wasn't it? I got you today, boom. Have you changed your clothes yet? It's all wet now, ha ha ha. I even recorded a video of how I threw the water balloons right at your head on the rooftop today. You didn't expect that, did you? Well, a witch like you needs to be taught a lesson before she knows how to listen to what people say. Hey! Someone's talking to you right here. Sarah. Let me ask you something. How long have you been working for our company? Finally, the witch is here. I've been working here for one month, and I'm your superior. What now? Do you want me to teach you something now? It's too late, baby. But I can still do it, if you bow your head and beg me for forgiveness, for ignoring me for a whole month. Have you met the CEO yet, Sarah? Well, no. But I'm sure I'm gonna meet him very soon. And you'll be fired when I meet him. Are you sure about that? You've been working here for one month but still haven't learned who are the members of the corporation's board of directors? What are you saying? Why should I care about that? Whatever. You'd better beg for my forgiveness, or I'll definitely make you pay for that. Really? Actually I'm the one who should say that, Sarah. You'd better learn who is your big boss before messing around. And you should be more careful when looking for a job next time. On behalf of AC's board of directors, I announce that you have been officially fired. Not only have you not fulfilled your assigned duties as our temporary employee, but you also play childish and harmful pranks on other employees in the company, including me. You have three days to hand over all the work to Mr. Brown and leave on this Friday. What? What the hell are you talking about? Who the hell are you to fire me? 
Well. You can check it yourself with your department manager, Mr. Brown. Julia. Why can such a lowly person like you be the CEO of the corporation? It doesn't make any sense. Is your father the former CEO? Be careful with your words, Sarah. I've been working here for eight years. The former CEO was my former boss. I had been his assistant for six years before I became the CEO when he retired two years ago. I told you I worked here long before you. I worked so hard to get this position. I can't believe it. It's just a childish prank, right? There's no way you can be the CEO. Why not? What do you know about me? We haven't met for a decade. You think I'm still a pushover I used to be back in high school? You think I'm still an idiot who you could easily manipulate and bully? Well, you know what they say. Once you are bullied, you will be bullied for life. It's once a bully, always a bully, idiot. It's the phrase for someone like you. Whatever. You're not allowed to fire me like that, just because I threw some water balloons at you. It's not just that, Sarah. Unlike you, I'm a professional person. I don't decide anything important based on personal matters. This decision is based on our company's benefits and has been approved by the entire board of directors. It was your department manager who suggested this decision, not me. But even if it wasn't her suggestion, I know I'm gonna do it soon. You're not talented as you think you are. Our clients complain a lot about your attitude towards them. And a lot of them have come to the rival company after working with you. You lied to me. This is all your fault. Why didn't you tell me earlier that you were the CEO? You can't just fire me like that. Of course I can. I'm the CEO, you know? Besides, it was you who never listened to whatever other people said. I told you I worked here for a long time, but you kept looking down on me and even bullied me right after you got here. Not only that, you also bullied other co-workers whom you didn't like. I can't let someone like you keep working here and destroying my company. Other employees would leave the company if you stayed any longer. And you are the one who just joined the company and considered yourself superior to everyone else. You did it to yourself, Sarah. Well, I just tried to help an old friend. You know? It was totally a misunderstanding here. The decision has been made. You're fired, Sarah. We're done for now. I'm gonna get going. I'm busy now. Don't try to contact me anymore. By the way, I'm not gonna come to that reunion event of yours, so have fun there yourself. Wait. Why are you so cold to your high school friend? You can change the decision. You're the CEO, right? Let me remind you one last thing, Sarah. I'm not your friend, never was and never will be. You were just a bully, a nightmare back in my high school days. Now if you want to continue complaining, talk directly to Mr. Brown. Hello. I would like for you to consider taking your daughter out of school. I am requesting that you quickly make a decision. I believe this way we can avoid any issues. Mr. Lucas. You're Jace's homeroom teacher, right? What's going on? The fact that you went out of your way to ask Jace for my contact. I'm very concerned. As I said, I would like for you to take your daughter out of school. I heard that you are a single mother. It must be difficult to pay for school as a single mother, am I correct? Just as a reminder, our school is a well-known private academy. Yes, of course I am aware of the school's ranking. Why are you saying that single mothers can't pay for school? Families that don't have a husband are inherently broken. 
our school's tuition fees are much greater than you think. I don't want you to come crying to me later about this. How did you come to this conclusion? We are more than able to continue paying for the tuition. And it is not your right to label single mothers as poor. A similar situation happened in the past. A single mother wanted to show off and enroll her child at this school. She wasn't able to pay for the tuition fees and ended up leaving. It was a very difficult task for me to handle. Something like that happened, huh? I can see why it would be difficult to handle. But you can't assume that every single mother is the same. I used to not take this stuff seriously in the past. I also thought the same thing as you. But because of those assumptions, I ended up putting myself in an awful situation. That's why you should take your daughter and leave before things get worse. Um, I don't think you've done this yet, but... Did you say anything to Jace? I haven't told her anything. I wanted to tell you first. If you'll quietly do what I tell you to do, then I won't make a big deal out of it. I can't believe you really assumed that we would just leave like that. There's something off about children who are raised by single mothers. Many of them end up having twisted personalities. Did you see that with your own eyes? Or are you simply labeling single mothers once again with your delusions? It's because you're a single mother you would say something like that. But I am basing my words off the truth. After dealing with single mothers and their children, this is something I have come to realize. It's primarily because of my past experiences I am coming to you with such statements. I find it difficult to believe that I'm hearing such words from an educator like yourself. Are you sure you're in the right mind to be teaching students? What are you saying? It's exactly because of the fact that I'm in the position of teaching students that I'm able to say such things. I have to objectively look at things. I don't understand why you think single mothers can't pay for tuition. You keep going on about this. Wouldn't it make more sense to contact them if the person actually became incapable of paying? If I waited until they ran out of money, then it would be too late. I want to deal with the issue before it gets to that point. Excuse me, but how old are you? What? What does my age have to do with this conversation? I can feel the age difference between us when I read your messages. People these days are so stubborn. I went out of my way to give you this opportunity to quit going to my school. It's in your best interest to accept my offer. Excuse me? I have a few words to say about your daughter, too. Jace is extremely stubborn and doesn't try to get along with the kids around her. As I expected of the daughter of a single mother. She hasn't learned how to properly communicate. Her social skills are inferior to others. What the hell are you saying? How dare you talk about my daughter like that? I'm simply giving you my thoughts as an unbiased third person. But I think I understand the situation even more now after talking to you. Considering the fact that Jace has a mother who can't understand this basic conversation. I'm not surprised that she acts out in class. Watch your tone. I've had enough. I will talk to Jace. We'll be in touch. I understand. I have given you my advice. You have one week to decide. I'll think about it. Hey, Jace. Sorry for bothering you while you're out with friends. But I need to talk to you about your teacher. Do you have a few minutes? Yes, sure. What's going on? Did Mr. Lucas say something to you? How does Mr. Lucas treat his students? Do you think he's a good teacher? Nope, not at all. I hate him. He discriminates against certain students. Really? How does he treat you? Well, to be honest, I didn't really want to mention this. 
but there was one time in class when he suddenly started insulting you. What? He was talking about how much of a shame it is to raise a child without a father. How disappointing you must be to not be able to fix your relationship with your husband. He told the whole class not to end up like that. Excuse me? What the heck? Are you serious? Yes, he tried to make it into a big joke. I tried to brush it off and laughed along a bit. My classmates did the same thing as me. I can't believe it. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Jace. I won't let him get away with this. It's okay. I don't care what he says to me. I know that you already do a lot of things for me. It's best to just ignore these kinds of pathetic people. You're the one who taught me that. That's right, but... I mean, it's great that you think this way. But if something is bothering you, then it's important to speak up about it. It's important to share your feelings and thoughts. Yes, I know. Whatever happens, I never want to become an adult like him. That's for sure. I see. But did you know that there's actually another person in my class who was also being raised by a single mom? She gets treated really well by Mr. Lucas, though. I don't know why she gets special treatment. Wait, really? I wonder why. I can try asking her tomorrow. She might talk to me about it. Depending on what she says. Mr. Lucas might finally get disciplined for his actions. I'm glad we think the same thing. Proud of you, daughter. All right, I'm counting on you then. Thank you for being so dependable. No problem. Let's talk again soon. Have fun with your friends, okay? It's been a week. Your time is up. Have you made your decision? Well, aren't you persistent? I wonder who's the pathetic one now. Wow, so cold. You're so immature. You're not a kid anymore. But it doesn't matter what you say anymore. The results won't change. Remember to handle the paperwork for your daughter by the end of the day. Do you know who I am? Do I look like I care? Hmm, I'll play along with you. You're a single mother who failed to remarry and is now living a pitiful life. So yes, I'm pretty sure I know who you are. I didn't fail to find another husband. I simply didn't want one. It's true that I'm a single mother. Wow, suddenly getting all high and mighty now? Keep your sad little excuses to yourself. I don't need them. Listen up, all right? You better go and take your daughter out of my school if you know what's good for you. I wonder who's going to be the one leaving school today. Excuse me? Are you sleep talking or something? I'm the chairman of the school board. I've already informed the principal of our conversation. What? What are you talking about? I wanted to maintain an amicable relationship with you because my daughter is enrolled in your class. I didn't want to have to report the situation. But you really left me no choice. The principal is my aunt. What? No, you're lying. You guys don't even have the same last name. I'm being serious. Just because we don't have the same last name doesn't mean we're not relatives. I've screenshotted our entire conversation and sent it to the principal. I expect that you'll be packing your bags soon. Hold on a second. This is all too sudden. How am I supposed to wrap my head around everything? I haven't said anything wrong, though. You really think you haven't said anything wrong up until this point? but I really did deal with an incident involving a single mother in the past. And that was super difficult for me. It's obvious that single mothers are poor. 
they can't raise their children effectively. I'm doing this on behalf of the school's reputation. All I'm doing is trying to protect the school. Did any of your supervisors tell you to do this? Obviously not. This was entirely done based on your own discretion. I mean, that may be right, but... I just don't want to have to deal with another incident like the one in the past again. Your actions are bringing down the school's reputation. Are you aware of this? Yes, that may be true. But I still don't believe I am at fault for anything. Oh, really? All right then, let's talk about your discriminatory actions towards students. Do you also believe that you are not at fault for this? Huh. What are you talking about? This is in regards to your comments towards students. Many have complained about how prejudiced and unfair you are during class. It seems like you also have another student who is being raised by a single mother. And so what about her? After you contacted me with your unreasonable demands, I talked to my daughter. My daughter didn't even need to say it out loud for me to understand just how frustrated she felt about the situation. I asked my daughter to do me a favor. I told her to speak to the other student I mentioned. Wait. Are you talking about Jenny? Yes, Jenny. Unexpectedly, Jenny came to us with full-fledged cooperation. What? What do you mean she cooperated? She told us some interesting news. It seems like you're romantically involved with Jenny's mother. That's not true. This is a complete lie. Jenny was crying while she told her story. She said she felt so ashamed that she couldn't tell anyone the truth. No wonder you were giving Jenny special treatment. No, that was never my intention. I would only treat her nicely sometimes. She doesn't approve of your relationship with her mother and feels extremely uncomfortable when you treat her better than the other students. Other students spoke out against you as well. What do you mean? All I ever wanted to do was act accordingly with my students' expectations of me. We get along very well. They even laugh at my jokes. Oh, you mean those offensive jokes of yours? The ones where you make fun of single mothers? The students hated them. What? How would you know? Whenever you made those jokes at my daughter's expense, her classmates would comfort her after class. They would reach out and show her support. Your students are far more mature than you will ever be. Did that actually happen? You should believe me, though. I've always had the students' best interests in mind. You went ahead and decided the single mothers were poor and couldn't raise children. Did you really think that it was a good idea to laugh at someone else's expense? I mean, it depends on the situation. Ah, something interesting is happening. At the very least, it seems like none of the students are on your side. Would you like to take a look at the messages you just received? Messages? What's going on? Um, the principal is blowing out my phone. Oh, really now? I wonder if it's because you're getting fired. Unfortunately, it looks like being a teacher isn't the right job for you. Wait, what the hell is this? I just got a notification on social media. Students expose teachers' hateful actions. Sounds about right. I don't know all the details, but it looks like the students took matters into their own hands. Now everyone will know everything you did wrong. Please stop them. I will take back my words. If this keeps going on, my future will be ruined. You tried to destroy my daughter's future. But you ended up destroying only yours. The world doesn't need a malicious teacher like you who keeps shoving their own prejudices down other people's throats. Don't you dare to try to teach ever again. Following that, Mr. Lucas was summoned to the principal's office and promptly dismissed. Even the rest of the teachers loathed him intensely. 
Jace and her classmates were acclaimed as heroes at the school. The news about Mr. Lucas spread like wildfire on the internet. As a consequence of the incident, he was permanently barred from teaching again. I hope Mr. Lucas acknowledges his mistakes and undergoes personal growth to become a better individual. Hey Lisa, I need some advice. Valentine's Day is coming up and I want to get a great gift for my girlfriend. Any ideas? How would I know what your girlfriend likes? You don't even know her preferences. How would I know? Hey, take it easy. I just need your suggestions precisely because I don't know we've only been dating for a few months. How would I know her preferences? What does your boyfriend usually give you? I just want a little advice. Can't you tell me what your boyfriend gives you? No, I don't know. Or maybe he gives you some unique gifts that you don't want to tell me is that, right? Oh, Mark, I'm not sure, to be honest. I don't really have any ideas. I already said that's not it. I haven't received any gifts. Wait, what? No gift for three years? You've been together for almost four years and he doesn't give you anything on Valentine's Day? That's kind of strange. What does he usually do then? Well, he's always super busy on Valentine's Day. Every year, we just end up going out for dinner the night before, and that's it, no flowers, no special gifts, just dinner. Oh my gosh! Your boyfriend is stingy or what? I don't know either we've had three Valentine's Days, and he never mentioned anything about gifts. That sounds underwhelming. I mean, Valentine's Day is a big deal for most couples, right? If I were in your shoes, I'd have a serious conversation with Otis. It's like he's not making any effort to make the day special for you. Yeah, it does bother me a bit, but he's always so swamped with work, and he says he shows his love in other ways. I'm not sure how to bring it up without making him feel bad. I get that, but come on, Lisa, you deserve to feel special on Valentine's Day too. Maybe you should just have an honest conversation with him. Tell him how you feel and see if there's a way you both can find a compromise. It's important that both of you feel appreciated in the relationship. You're right, Mark. I'll talk to him about it. I just hope he understands where I'm coming from. If he doesn't, I don't know. Maybe you're right, and I should reconsider things. Exactly, Lisa. A small gift is enough to show his care and love. You're not asking for too much. But at least there should be some attentiveness in the relationship. You deserve someone who goes the extra mile to make you feel loved, especially on Valentine's Day. So stay calm and see how he thinks. In general, I'm already used to him not giving me gifts so I'm mentally prepared. By the end of Valentine's Day. Hey babe, just a little reminder, it's Valentine's Day today. Oh, hey Lisa. Yeah, I know, but I'm on this business trip. I just can't make it back in time to celebrate. I'm really sorry. We can have a dinner the day after then, okay? Well, it's just, it seems like you're always busy on this day, Otis. Every year, you're either working or have some last-minute trip. It's just hard for me to understand why Valentine's Day isn't important to you. I know it might seem that way, but you know how demanding my job can be. I promise I'll make it up to you once I'm back, okay? Otis, it's not just about making it up afterward. Why is that? Do you even consider me your girlfriend? What's so special about it is that you're making such a fuss. No matter what day it is. I still have to go to work. It's not beneficial to me at all. It's just that this business trip was unavoidable. I can't believe what you're saying. Why do you consider this day just an ordinary day? While other guys are busy buying gifts and flowers for their girlfriends, and what about you? You are such a jerk. Lisa, don't get too angry. I don't want to make you sad, but I genuinely don't understand why Valentine's Day is so important. I don't see it as a special day. I thought you wanted to surprise me. But by the end of the day, I didn't receive any gifts. Do you know how disappointed I am? It's not just about a special dinner. It's about feeling like we're a priority in each other's lives. 
but for me, love doesn't depend on Valentine's Day. I always try to show my love and care every day, not just on one day of the year. I want to believe you. But I'm tired of feeling like Valentine's Day is just another ordinary day for us. I'm just a normal girl, and I also want my boyfriend to care and give me a small bouquet. But you can't even do that. You said that you would take care of me, but you haven't paid attention to me. Even once Valentine's Day is just an excuse for me to see if you remember me or not. Lisa, I've told you before, my job is demanding, and I couldn't help it. It's not like I wanted to forget or be on a business trip. I can't always control my work schedule, Lisa. For the past three years, you never thought about my feelings on these special days. It's not just about the trip, Otis, it's about the fact that you don't seem to care. You don't even try to make it up to me, and you don't value the importance of this day to me. Look, I don't want to argue, but I can't just apologize for something I couldn't control. I have responsibilities at work, and you should understand that by now. I do understand your work is important, but you're in control of how you show your love and appreciation. I also used to think that love is enough. But now I understand that you don't care about love days, and you don't even care about me. Well, it's just a gift. What do you like? So I can buy it for you. I don't need it anymore. I don't even ask you to buy expensive gifts for me. I just want you to be by my side on days like this. All over three years, we just went out for dinner on the day before. Then you always got busy on the right Valentine's Day. Do you know how lonely I was? Fine, if it's that important to you, I'm sorry that I couldn't be there on Valentine's Day. As for the gift, I will give it to you later. Forget it. It's better if you don't see me for a while or else. I'll get furious. It's not just about the apology, Otis, it's about us being on the same page. You're really hard to understand. After Valentine's Day. Hey Lisa, I hope you're doing all right. Just wanted to check in and see how your Valentine's Day went. Hey Mark, thanks for asking. Honestly, it was pretty disappointing. Otis wasn't around, and he didn't even mention Valentine's Day until I reminded him. It feels like he just doesn't prioritize our relationship on these special occasions. Wow, again? That's really frustrating. It's like he doesn't even acknowledge how important these moments are for you. I can't help but be worried about you, Lisa. This isn't the first time he's let you down on significant days. I know, Mark, and it's been bothering me a lot. I don't understand why he doesn't see how much this means to me. I want to believe he's just busy with work, but it's hard when he doesn't make any effort, even after I remind him. Yeah, it's understandable to feel that way. I hate to even suggest this, but have you ever considered the possibility that he might have someone else? I mean, it just seems odd that he wouldn't even mention Valentine's Day until you reminded him. I've thought about it, Mark, but I don't think that's the case. He's been sharing photos from his business trip, and he's been in touch, albeit not as much as I'd like. I think he genuinely is just swamped with work. But it's starting to feel like he's using it as an excuse, you know? I see what you mean. It's tough when you want to trust someone, but their actions make it hard to do so. Lisa, I can't help but feel you deserve better. Thanks, Mark. I've decided that our fourth anniversary is going to be a turning point for us. It's the last chance for both of us to make a decision about where this relationship is going. I'm tired of feeling neglected, and I need to know if he's willing to step up and put effort into our relationship. I think that's a fair approach, Lisa. You deserve clarity and respect in your relationship. Whatever happens, just know that I'm here for you, and I support whatever decision you make. Thank you, Mark. Your support means the world to me. On the fourth anniversary day. Hey Lisa, happy fourth anniversary. I made an effort to remember this day because I know it's important to you. Aw, thank you, Otis. I appreciate that you remembered. It means a lot to me. Hey, how about we go out for a fancy dinner tonight to celebrate? I wish I could, Lisa but I have an important meeting with a potential client today. It's for a contract sign, 
and I can't afford to miss it. If this contract is signed, I'll have a chance for a promotion. Again, Otis? You know how much this day means to me, and now you're prioritizing work over our anniversary? You're always about work time you open your mouth. Have you ever thought and prioritized me? Lisa, work is truly important to me. But it doesn't mean I don't care about you. It's not that I don't care about our anniversary, Lisa. I'm doing all of this for our stable future. This contract could be a big opportunity for us. You know how demanding my job is. It doesn't mean I don't care about you. You are the most important thing in my life. But right now I need to prioritize my career. You say that, but you always have a reason not to spend time with me. Sometimes I feel abandoned and neglected. Think about it. Can work truly bring real happiness? Are you sure you're not losing something important and valuable like our love? I understand your thoughts and I'm sorry for making you feel that way. Please believe me. This job is not just for personal goals, but for our future as well. I'm trying my best and I hope you can understand and support me during this time. I understand that, Otis, but I need you here with me, not just in the future, but right now too. We can't keep putting everything on hold for some distant future that may or may not come. I'm here, in the present and I need your time and attention. I get it, Lisa, but you know I'm doing this for us, for our future together. If this contract goes through, it could mean so much for both of us. I'm trying to build a stable foundation for our life together. Sometimes I feel like I'm not being prioritized. Can't we find a way to balance work in our relationship? I want you to succeed, but I also don't want to lose a piece of our love. Lisa, I do value you and I'm sorry if it doesn't always seem that way. I'll try to find a balance between work and our relationship, but this client meeting is really crucial. I don't want to lose you and our love. Give me another chance to prove it. How many times have you not considered me important? If you continue like this, I won't forgive you. You don't need to prove anything. Just leave me alone. Don't be like that, please. I promise this is the last time. I will spend time with you once I finish the work. If I succeed, we can celebrate together. A few minutes later. Hey, how's it going? Do you have a date tonight? You have been four years together. When will I have something like that? No date. He's busy again. Why is it like that? Does he keep leaving you on important occasions like this? I can't accept that. Where is he? Let me ask him. Forget about him. I don't want to talk about him anymore. Let him do his work. He said he has to meet a partner or a client or something. Come on, Lisa. You shouldn't let him do whatever he wants. He will develop a habit of thinking that you will always forgive and overlook his actions. In general, you shouldn't be so easy with him. Well, I don't know what to do now. I don't know what he's doing or who he's meeting. I'm saddened and can't stop thinking about his attitude and words. You need to have a clear conversation with him. If he doesn't want to continue this relationship anymore, or if he doesn't love you anymore, then this love should come to an end. But if you don't dare to talk, let me discuss it with him. Don't do that. Our matters should be resolved by us. After he finishes his work, I will take the initiative to meet him. Don't be sad anymore. Let's go out for dinner tonight. It's been a while since the two of us had dinner together sometimes. We have to go out to improve our mood. That's fine. You have to take me to a really nice dinner. What do you want to eat? You can choose. Tonight, I'll treat you to a lavish meal. I know a newly opened French restaurant. Actually, I was supposed to choose that restaurant for our fourth anniversary. Let's go there. I want to taste their newest dishes. Let's meet at 8 o'clock tonight. Three hours later. Damn it! Why didn't you pick up my phone? I'm not a puppet. Why did you treat me like a puppet? How would you explain being in a restaurant? You say you worked with clients, but your clients are weird, aren't they? 
You misunderstood. That was indeed my customer. Whatever you see is not the truth at all. It's not like you think. The clients not only brought along two children, but also continuously referred to you as dad. Are you seriously pretending you don't know me? I, I. Okay, okay, you're right. They're my family, Lisa. My wife and kids. We got married, and it's been like this for a while. Oh my gosh! What the hell is going on? Are you kidding me, Otis? Your wife and your children? I have been by your side for so long without knowing this. I'm truly shocked. Why would you approach me if you already have a wife and child? I know it sounds awful, but I was trapped in a boring life, Lisa. I found you, and I want to be with you. Please understand. Understand? You lied to me for over three years, Otis. This is unforgivable. You're a jerk. How can you treat me like this? Don't you feel guilty towards your wife and child? You seem so polite and sophisticated, but behind that, you're a vile and perverted individual. I just wanted to seek some new joy, but I don't want my wife to know about this. You've cheated without any shame. Your wife should know about this and realize the wickedness of her husband. So throughout four years, I trusted a deceitful person like you. I want to say this to you for a long time, but now that you found out, I don't want to explain anymore. Whenever you said you were busy or had unexpected matters, you were actually with your wife, right? You guessed it right. I couldn't let my wife know about my affair, so I always spent time with my family. You cheated on your wife, and now you're cheating on me too? Lisa, I don't want to get a divorce, especially for the sake of the children. Please, don't tell my wife about us. It's too late for that, Otis. I can't be with someone who's already married. You've betrayed both of us. I'm going to find your wife and tell her the truth. Please, Lisa, I'm begging you. It'll destroy everything. I'll figure this out, I promise. I've never had such a terrible boyfriend like you. From now on, I'll consider you a stain in my life. How could I ever love someone like you? You made your choice, and I have to live with the consequences of my own actions, too. Lisa, please, just think about it one more time before you do anything. This will ruin everything I have. I've thought about it, Otis, and my decision stands. It's time to face the truth and deal with the mess you've created. After everything that happened, it took me a long time to come to terms with what just occurred. I never could have imagined that James would turn out to be this kind of person. He deceived not only his wife, but also deceived me. Unintentionally, I became the third person in this situation. It's a lesson for me, Dot, and I believe I need to thoroughly understand who the man by my side is and what kind of relationships he has. That can help me avoid unwanted situations as for Otis. I don't care about him anymore, but I guess his wife will probably suggest a divorce. Because no one can accept their spouse having an affair with someone else for four whole years.